Hi, I'm Emily. And my name is Nana, and we're from Miracle Properties. And hey guys, my name's Imran Locken from Modus Group. Yeah, and this week we were thinking we were gonna cover some of the questions we've been getting in our Facebook community about starting out in property. What sort of questions you've had in this week, guys? What's come in? Yeah, so first of all, people are asking if they need to set up a company in the UK. So what's your take on that? Can they do it personally? And is it better tax uh, benefits if you do it personally? Yeah, it's a really good question, guys. And obviously great to be here with you guys as always and really enjoying doing these episodes. Um, so in terms of setting up a company, and great question that your community have asked. So it, most investors, depending on where they're based in the world, um, so let's say they're in Sweden where you guys are, and most of them will, 90% of them will set up a UK limited company to buy real estate. And there are probably you know, a number of reasons why they might do that. Um, firstly, for tax benefits, and just to make everyone clear, I'm not an accountant. We do have an accountancy firm that can help and support you, but I won't make that clear on, on this episode. But if you set up a limited company from a tax point of view, when you're buying UK property, um, and whether it's a buy to lead or a HMO um, or doing something bigger as a deal, then you will find that the tax regime will mean that your company in the UK will pay taxes on the income that it's created, but then you will personally pay no further taxes in the UK. You'll only pay tax if you take that money back to Sweden. I think the challenge is when you buy property through your own name in the UK is a number of things. Potentially limited on lending as well. So you might have issues around lending. And I know that's something that you want to cover off, hopefully in a further episode, yeah. but also that you know, the moment you start to earn income in the UK, you're going to pay personal taxes on that income. And then you're going to pay tax on that income in Sweden at the same time. So overall, you're probably going to be at a sort of a bit of a financial loss rather than the financial gain. Yeah. Yeah. So you will recommend that we should start a company in the UK instead? Definitely. I think I think most investors, I would say, absolutely recommend start up a company, especially if you're going into different types of deals and strategies. So if you're going to do sort of HMOs as part of your business and then you might be doing another project like a joint venture with another investor, well, that needs to be a separate company. And we could oh, we could probably do a whole episode on on joint venture structures. I'm sure you've done some things like that in your podcast. But yeah. I would absolutely say to you, most investors, you know, 100 percent of the time, set up a UK company as a route to go down. I will throw one caveat to that though, one caveat to that. Yeah. Um, well, two actually, always talk to an accountant first before doing it is the first thing. And, and secondly, if you're a, um, let's say you're a Swedish resident, but you actually have a UK passport. So let's say for example, you've got some descendants or family members and you're very lucky to have that passport because that is gold dust in the UK because it will help with lending. So it might mean, it might mean that you might decide to buy one property in your own name. Okay, but that is a conversation with the broker and with the accountant before we decide to take that route. Yeah, so you should always talk with both before you decide doing any property purchase, right? Absolutely. Before you start your journey, when you start your journey, come have a conversation. You know, if you want to have a conversation with our accountancy firm, we can advise. It just means that you can go in there with open eyes. You know, you don't go in there blind. And last thing you want is just a big tax bill at the end of the year. Yeah. 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 And then I, th I guess it depends on what you're planning on doing too, right? Because having a company involves cost that too. Yes. So if, it's, if, you, if you're just planning on having one property, it might not even cover the cost of having the company. That, that's, and I think that's part of the challenge. You know, I've met a number of investors over the years, and I'm sure you guys have too, where they've bought one buy to let and they go fantastic, but then they're running a limited company for that buy to let. And if yeah. the cash flow say, I know, 200, 250 a month, UK sterling that is. Um, so what's that in Swedish approximately? What's that in Swedish? 3,000. Yeah. About 3,000 Swedish. So you get to the end of your year and you go, okay, I've now got a tax, I've now got an accountancy bill for, you know, anywhere from sort of, you know, 1,200 to sort of 15, 1,600 pounds for the yeah. year then it's yes. obviously wiping out a lot of your cash flow. So the, the benefit, the, the key thing with a property business is to scale this business. That's really important that you are buying multiple assets over yeah. a period of time. Yeah.